Avi Meyerstein, the founder and president of the Alliance for Middle East Peace, joining us from France. Avi, thanks for being with us. I came across you in an uh, opinion piece I think you put in the Times of Israel this week, which we'll touch on here. But uh, tell us about what your organization is doing, how it got started. Thanks, David. It's great to be with you. Um, ALMEP is the network of over 150 organizations that are uh, Israeli-Palestinian groups working together to build relationships, partnerships, and trust uh, on the ground between Israelis and Palestinians, both within and across borders. Um, and we got started uh, almost 20 years ago. Um, I was in Washington uh, at the time watching the horrible uh, situation on the ground, Second Intifada, and um, being someone who had been lifelong passionate about uh, Israel and, and the region and grew up in the time of Oslo with hope that it might uh, be on the right path, um, felt like there had to be something that we could do to see future diplomacy and negotiations take a different course and ultimately uh, uh, survive and take root on the ground. And from my perspective, uh, if there was one thing that was truly missing uh, during that big, long attempt at peace in the 90s and just beyond, it was that the publics, the Israeli and Palestinian publics, were largely left out of the process. It was a top-down process. And it seemed that if we were ever going to have a different outcome in the future, we really needed to invest in that ground ground level activity. And so I reached out to a few organizations, uh, discovered that there were quite a few out there, um, schools uh, with uh, bilingual, bicultural programs like the Hand in Hand schools, yeah. um, organizations working to clean the environment between Israelis and Palestinians together, organizations uh, now working in Jerusalem, you referenced uh, uh, that I wrote about recently, Kids for Peace, working in Jerusalem between youth uh, who otherwise never meet. Um, and what all of these programs share in common is they're bringing people together who almost never meet, growing up in separation, and unfortunately, um, feeling and seeing all around them uh, lots of fear uh, and even hatred of the other side. Um, and so these programs are bridging that divide and um, both improving people's lives in the here and now, whether it's through education or sports um, or clean water or transportation, uh, but also creating those partnerships that are transforming people's attitudes uh, so that we can uh, see a different uh, path to peace in the future. And so that's how ALMEP got started. Uh, we were an all-volunteer effort for seven years, and, wow. and the organizations came to Washington on their own dime. Uh, we <laughs> organized— Hats off to you. Uh, it's an, it's an incredible you. initiative, and in, you're, all the things you're saying are, are so sensical. Um, I, I want to, from your piece in the Times of Israel, I want to put the question to you that I think you put out there, which came to me top of mind. And, and in your piece, you wrote, quote, what does a program engaging Israeli and Palestinian, Arab, Jewish, and Muslim youth in Jerusalem look like when some of their peers are facing off in the streets? Let's close quote. How does, how do flare-ups in the violence affect what you're after there? Well, I don't, I, I, I don't want to take your second question out of context of the first, which is how does the program look like? Yeah. What's remarkable, perhaps, is when you get Israelis and Palestinians in a room, uh, maybe even especially young people, how, how quickly you can, you can engage them and facilitate a conversation where they, uh, they're not ignoring things, they're confronting the toughest issues, but you're building this partnership. Um, it's not easy, for sure, uh, when all around them they're growing up in an atmosphere where uh, people are, are afraid of each other. Wow. And, and the diplomacy and, and hope has been stuck for so long. Um, one of the interesting things that we see, and we did some polling of 15 to 21 year olds, uh, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Arab, Palestinian, Israeli, all around the region uh, between Israel, West Bank and Gaza. Um, what's interesting is when you ask people what their preferred solution is to the conflict, there's wide agreement, 12 to 13 percent between the two sides say that the status quo is their preferred situation. In other words, something everybody agrees about is the situation we've got now is not the one that anybody wants. And so um, we have lots of things that we can work together on. Um, and, and what a lot of these programs do is they give people strength. They help people see that, that actually the people that want to work together and want to solve this conflict for generations to come, that those people are the majority. 
um, and, and strengthening them and bringing them together to see that if there's an us versus them in this situation, it's not Israelis versus Palestinians. It's people who want to do the hard work of figuring this out and, and living together in nonviolence and ultimately peace versus the people who are trying to, to win, so to speak, in a win-lose uh, battle, which unfortunately turns out to be lose-lose. Absolutely. Uh, you know, these conflicts, as, as you touch on here over the decades here, have been largely fueled by the youth. And you talk about the events of 20 years ago, there's a whole new generation uh, of teenagers, uh, young people on both sides who didn't have their war, so to say. Uh, do you find that's hard to recruit from, from these families or, or get these young people to come out for programs? You know, when I started doing this work, one of the things that jumped off the page at me from talking to these organizations was even in the times of the Second Intifada, they had waiting lists of Israelis and Palestinians who wanted to participate in these programs, parents who wanted their kids to participate in these programs, because I think they saw that this was a path to a better future. Um, and, you know, I think we see, although the people that make it on television, unfortunately, are the ones who may be itching for, uh, for battle, uh, I think most young people today actually are yearning for quite something else, which is a better future where they can grow up, raise a family, have a good job, be, be active members of their community, live in democracy. We found that 90% on both sides of Israeli and Palestinian youth, 90% share a value of democracy and, and wanting to, to live in a democracy. So there are shared values, believe it or not. Um, we just have to work to bring people together and, and help them overcome this this terrible oppressive environment where everybody's walking around traumatized and fearful um, uh, day to day and year to year. I mean, it's been uh, truly refreshing to hear all these sentiments from you, uh, eye-opening and, and encouraging at the same time. It's been a pleasure to have you on the program here today and I can only wish you continued good luck and success here and try to promote your initiatives here in any small way, small way we can on our program here. I'm assuming fundraising is an important part of this and uh, to any of our viewers out there, contact this guy here to uh, keep this initiative rolling and growing as it has been under your leadership. So Avi Meyerstein, uh, thanks for joining us today on Zoom In. Thanks, David. We've got a long roster of programs that will inspire your viewers. We'd love to connect them with you in the future. Thank you again, as always.